Hello my friends and channel subscribers, Greg here from Brisbane, Australia with another uncut, unedited, no bull video. Today I would like to talk about vitamin C. People reach out to me and say, Greg, you're talking about zinc, you're talking about vitamin D, you're talking about other things. Why you never talk about vitamin C? The reason is that because I'm going halfway through quite significant body of research about vitamin C. Vitamin C, it's not as easy as it may seem. So what we know about vitamin C? People used to tell us, oh, you know, when you get sick, you need vitamin C. Uh, you need to eat uh, lemons or drink lemon juice or whatever to get vitamin C. You know what? That research totally debunks everything that you may know about vitamin C. I'll probably create a separate video about this, but let's unwrap a little bit so I can I can tempt you with, with waiting and, 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 and then providing the full information about vitamin C. First of all, does vitamin C help us not to get sick? Yes and no. Research was quite interesting. So it's divided on a couple of different different tangents. So the first one is there's a two types of vitamin C. Oral take and intravenous, right? So oral take vitamin C is not as efficient as uh, drip. And drip is not practical or maybe not even legal uh, for average consumer. So we won't touch that. So when you take vitamin C orally as a supplement or part of the food, people are asking me, um, so what's the problem with vitamin C? First of all, it's a half-life of vitamin C. Half-life is when ingredients basically work half of its potency, right? So when you take vitamin C, the half-life of vitamin C between one to two hours. So you need to actually top it up through the day to retain vitamin C in your body. Uh, the, the way the vitamin C works in the body, it has uh, it basically, the body works in an uh, electric system. So it basically attracts its electron to oxygen in an and deoxidized environment. So it, it acts as an antioxidant. This is why we need vitamin C. It basically reduces radical damage in the body through uh, antioxidation. There's a lot of food that ox create oxidative stress and it's actually part of burning glucose, body gets ox oxidative stress. So vitamin C raw is actually antioxidant. But if too much glucose in the body, vitamin C is not as efficient. Vitamin C also not as efficient if you take dose more than you can absorb. It goes to show from, a, from what I read from research, they are taking more than uh, 500 milligrams of vitamin C uh, at time won't absorb more than you will take. So basically, you flush rest of the um, rest of the vitamin C you're taking. Also, best way to take vitamin C with food, not as a supplement, to avoid um, uh, just elements of vitamin C, which is ascorbic acid. So, quickly to touch on food that uh, uh, high in vitamin C. You believe um, all the citrus fruit got uh, a lot of vitamin C, all the, you know, uh, tangy food got vitamin C? Not really at all. Let's start with what doesn't have vitamin C. So for you carnivores, the people that eat only meat, uh, it's a bit of trouble. There's almost no meats contain vitamin C. And those meats that do contain vitamin C, it's not enough for daily recommended intake. So basically, daily recommended intake to help your body um, uh, with antioxidants and vitamin C plays huge role in fat metab uh, metabolizing properties and, and, and other things. I don't want to go in this short video, but vitamin C is extremely important for immune system and others. So then you say, well, lemon and lime. Yes, true. But there's a lot of acid in those and not much of vitamin C. Yes, because there's so much acid, you believe there's uh, so much vitamin C that's good for you. I don't want to do any spoilers. I'll probably list uh, later a whole range of foods that high in vitamin C. But for now, uh, in Australia, for Australian listeners, the capsicums are most beneficial for vitamin C. They've got the biggest one. And red capsicums got more than a green one. So if you eat capsicums, 
you most likely if you daily uh, and a number of times a day you most likely have just enough vitamin c in your body plus other uh, uh, nutritious diet for those who are not in australia capsicums in australia elsewhere i think they call them bell peppers um, so here you go bell peppers uh, uh, should be your choice of part of your healthy diet but bell peppers actually quite big uh, um, con contain a lot of fiber as well so if you're on ketogenic diet it should not break your ketogenic diet so vitamin c you're asking me next question uh, does it help you uh, to get sick or when you get sick um, does it help you uh, to get rid of the um, virus uh, earlier yes and no so having adequate amount of vitamin c in the body does prevent you uh, to get those viruses that you otherwise wouldn't get but not 100 percent if they get in your case your 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 uh, um, viral infection may be not as severe but when you already got it um, taking more vitamin c the bigger dose vitamin c again you won't absorb it but taking it maximum so you max out from what body can absorb um, according to the study uh, reduced sickness by 25 percent which is quite significant another another way to think about vitamin c it's very vulnerable to everything first of all oxygen it's antioxidants every time that that you you leave it in open air it will lose its properties so if you think about um, fresh vegetables high in vitamin c that's great but if you can buy them frozen defrost and eat you get the biggest benefit of that because they've been snapped frozen at the field and there's no travel time there's no different environments hot cold for vegetables to oxidize so the idea is to get frozen defrost and eat another point i would like to make that research points out that Heating up uh, vitamin C rich food would reduce vitamin C properties by 20 to 40 percent. So, if you believe you just getting enough vitamin C from food, but you cook that food and then you frozen and then you defrost it or reheat it in the microwave, you actually may kill most of the vitamin C out of there. Would you? There's another question people are asking me, should I take it as a supplement? Yes, you should. And it's opposite from vitamin D and vitamin E and others. When you take vitamin D, um, I recommend you take um, up to 12,000 international units um, daily with no side effects. Vitamin D accumulates in the body. Vitamin C does not accumulate in the body. You need to take smaller portions multiple times a day ideally three or four times a day if you're supplementing if you're not supplementing and you're doing one meal a day again you may supplement uh, because your meals are not frequent saying that if you are not at the sea if you're eating fresh most nutritious food you should have enough vitamin c in the body and i would focus on other vitamins so if you think to take vitamin c not to get sick i would say um, taking care of other vitamins and minerals is more crucial than focus on vitamin C. I would say focus on vitamin D, vitamin B, vitamin A, vitamin E, K2. Focus on zinc, copper, iron. Vitamin C is important, but it's, it's really hard to get deficient if you live... Um, um, if if your lifestyle is all right if you if you're not drinking too much alcohol the reason why alcohol because alcohol will flush all the nutrients and minerals with urine out of the body because it's a toxin and body try to get rid of the toxin so it basically um creates a lot of liquid that will be flushed um and and and, and minerals and vitamins will go with it too or if you get uh, kidney disease, when you get kidney disease, uh, there are um, certain complications with vitamin C. But again, I will create a longer video talking about vitamin C. Again, this video um, probably will go under umbrella. Trust me, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. I'm just uh, uh, guided, uh, 
reading latest research, trying to interpret to plain English and trying to tell you what doctors may not tell you if they don't have financial gain out of it. Doctors are great people. They're trying to diagnose us. Um, then they will give us prescription to, to treat the diagnosis. I'm trying to basically give people information so you make your own lifestyle choices. Please do me a favor. If you like this video or any other videos on my channel, uh, subscribe, hit like, hit the notification bell so you won't miss any other video on my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Greg.